ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gospelicious Radio. Uh, yes, welcome. Gospelicious Radio, <laughs> episode 39. 39. 39. That's right. Wow, we're almost at f- we're almost 40 weeks For- old. 40. Wow. 40. I mean, we've taken a few weeks off here and yeah. there, so we're more like 44 weeks old. Yeah, but, hey, yeah, you know but what? still, we, you know, we're, we're almost at the... It's been very good, uh, almost, almost the, a year, you yeah, know? We're almost at the top of the hill. Yes, we are. You, you know? know? We're almost over the hill now. Absolutely, 40 years old, right? Yes. Yeah, 39, though. 39. We'll be yeah. 39 this yeah. week. Uh, we gotta, we got to think of something special for uh, episode 40. Uh, yeah. And uh, we we uh, we we'll we'll discuss that, and then may- maybe a, maybe a, a a funky surprise next week. A funky, maybe a funky surprise. A funky surprise. Or it could just be a regular show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could just be a regular. The funky show. surprise <laughs> will be it's a regular show. It's, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the big surprise, is it? Yeah, you know, exactly. that's <laughs> oh, oh, guys, man, we are yes. we are attempting yes to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ one podcast mm-hmm. at a time. My name is Adam Miner, sitting across the desk from me, as always, the Reverend. Pastor, the Rev, and the man, Pastor Timothy Howard Jr. Y'all, giddy up, buddy. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. You know what I mean. Woo. But praise God, brother. Who we? Oh yes. Who oh, we? Yes. PT. Oh yeah. PT. You know? Who we? Who we? Who we? <laughs> PT. Yeesh. You know. Nah. Oh, but, nah that's great. How you doing this morning? I'm doing great. I'm yeah. doing great. Got my coffee, Jonathan Edwards mug, I, in honor of Boom. our. Uh, well, did I have this with the, the one the last time? You did. It? Yeah, when we discussed the you resolutions. And, yeah, that uh, was a great episode. That was a great episode, and uh, yeah, you all I, should check yeah. that out. And, that was uh, episode 38. Check that out uh, from last week. Yeah. We discussed uh, the Reformation, Martin Luther, Jonathan Edwards, the resolutions, uh, and then kind of applied them to kind of our lives yeah. today. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It was good. It was a great, great episode. And pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yes, yes. Pretty cool. Yes. Um, so, you know, we, we were, we met last week at night we did now we're back to our regular morning uh, early morning early morning hours i know we're back to the to the crack of dawn crack of dawn i know and uh here at beautiful ebc yes in the office in the office that was a beautiful sunset I mean, last night did i you? mean yeah. mysterious location oh yeah. mysterious location yes yeah. and an underground bunker i'll you edit know? that out later <laughs> i'll probably forget oh no no but yeah forget. yesterday <laughs> um it was it was a nasty day all day yeah, and then at night you posted that picture online yeah. of like this like beautiful, beautiful sunset last night. It was like pink. It was like a Bob Ross painting, Exa- you know. E- yeah, exactly. Was, yes, happy, you know, happy well, little it was clouds. Just a gray day all day, and then yeah. at four like fifteen, suddenly the sun's out just in time for the sunset. I know it, you know. It and was like, oh, uh. it was like, oh, that's precious. Oh, it's precious. <laughs> that's precious. Oh, uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. no, oh, uh-huh. you know. <laughs> no, no, it was it was good. It was it was it was it got a little snow yesterday up yeah. here, you know. So, which we're entering into that season, um, definitely you entering. Shut your mouth. Into, I know, you shut I know, your mouth, sir. I know, I know, I know. Because how dare you? you know, I how dare you say the s word? You know, <laughs> on this radio station here. You how know, dare that's you? right. You know, but uh, I uh, know it's, it's a swear word, man. It is around here. Uh, the s word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I always uh, get a little. I don't know. Yeah, look, I, I've I've grown up in New England, right? And right. so, uh, you know, people always say, "Oh, you're used to this." Well, yeah, I am. But do you ever really get used to it? You don't. You uh, don't. You don't. And you know what? As I get older, yeah, and yeah, I consider myself getting older. I'm 36. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's yeah. not like I'm 22 uh, anymore. Well, yeah. Uh, it's uh, every year when the winter comes around, it's like, uh, well, well, it's it's one of those, man, yeah. Uh, I don't want to do this again. I, I don't want to shovel my driveway. I don't want to, you know, because because when you're a kid, you look forward to the snow. Because when I was when when you know when when we were kids, you know, what I mean, you could get a snow day. You know what I mean? Mm. And you can go out and go play in the snow and whatnot. You know what I mean? And which was which was fun. Then then you get to be an adult, and now all of a sudden, you know, two feet of snow is no longer fun anymore. It destroys your back. You know, what I mean? that's what it is. And uh, and it's like, dear Lord, I remember a few years ago, uh, I know I, I referenced that gigantic snowstorm uh, that knocked out power in Connecticut. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, most of Connecticut. And I remember in front of my my, my grandfather's house is in uh, East Windsor and he lives right along. Well, he lived right along the Connecticut River and his house, the houses are all like, you know, like really close together. I mean, every I mean, it was a very. Uh, you know, suburban neighborhood. Every house was like right next to each other, and his house was very close to the road as well. So, like, he had like this like little maybe driveways length, and then his house. And uh, the plow trucks would come by, 
And, uh, I mean, they would just pile all the snow uh, during that storm. And there was literally, the snow was so high, I kid you not, it was taller than my wife. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, and my oh. wife's like, f- you know, five foot. And, uh, and so it was, it, we, we were there, it was before we had, we had kids, and I went over and I, uh, I had to shovel him out, which was, uh, which was uh, not fun. It's an adventure. You know? It was, yeah, it was, you know, but, uh, yeah, so – uh, I, you know, it's funny, you know, I was reading the other day again, because I'm not a weather nerd, but sometimes I, I, around this time of year, you're kind of curious, like what's the, what's the prediction for this year? And, uh, there, there are two schools of thought on it. Um, one is, uh, the farmer's almanac, which says that we're going to get hammered this year. It always says that, but it does say that every single year, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, we've and been, that is we've true. been really blessed well, uh, in terms of snowfall. It's actually been not that bad the last couple of years. Oh yeah, the last couple of years not been bad. Yeah. You know what I mean. So we're and due for one. <laughs> we we are due for one. You know, and we're um, due for a doozy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the other one? Farmers the, on the, the, the other one I forget what it was, but it was like more of a. Uh, it was you know accounting for uh, climate change oh. and all this other stuff, and uh, and it's saying that we're gonna have a warmer, uh, a warmer season. But you know yeah. what? The thing the thing is this: it, what they're always calling for a warmer season, but based upon uh, this morning and yesterday. Uh, you know, what was it like? Ni- you know, it felt like 19 degrees out or whatever it was. You know what I mean? It was, it was cold and, uh, it's, it's getting there. But anyways, you know, we can talk yeah. about weather all day. Huh. You know. How about that weather? How about that weather? You know what I mean? I'm sure people <laughs> don't want to hear us, you know, you know, oh yeah, you know, but, yeah. but anyways, yeah. but um, yeah. So what do we got? Yeah. Talk about the most random, awkward segue of all time. That was a, that was a random, awkward segue. This, this but has nothing to do with what we just talked about. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Speaking of the weather, you know, we, I kind of, I kind of um, wanted. To, well, we've been talking about doing this subject for a while. Yeah. And it's one of the more awkward ones yes. to talk about, honestly. But sure. I think as as Christians and me and you as Christian men, yeah, we need to hold each other um, accountable in this area. Right. Uh, this is a. Um, a tough area to talk about just because it's so personal. Right. It's very intimate. Uh, yes. And uh, but it's timely because uh, in in the in the the Christian world, as you want to as you want to call it, the the Christian yeah. culture that's out there in the in the world, um, it's timely because of uh, a um, a story that came out uh, last week. Right. I want to say. Uh, what day is it today? Today we're recording on the 13th, so this was, uh, I think, last Thursday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So about a week ago now. A week ago from today, yeah. Um, and uh, a a Christian comedian, uh, his name is John Christ. Um, mm-hmm. Many of you have, who are listening to this have probably heard of him. Um, he does a lot of Facebook stuff, a lot of uh, YouTube YouTube, clips. Instagrams, you know, uh, those kind of things. There's yeah. uh, him, um, guys like Trey Kennedy, yes. who do these sort of like... Christian parody things yes. of like you know uh, making fun of missions trips yeah or like and, pe- people you know, Chick- ordering at Chick Fil A yeah and it's like you know, him reenacting stuff with a selfie video he, he did the um, uh, he does stand up comedy stand up uh, comedy yeah um, much in the vein of Tim Hawkins yeah and, and these he did guys. that church hoppers uh you know church shoppers yeah church shoppers yeah, yeah, yeah church yeah. shoppers very yeah. funny stuff yeah it was funny it you was know, great John, yeah. he, he's an acquired taste you know I, I yeah think, uh, you know for me you know, John Chris is funny yeah. Uh, you know, I thought but, he was great. You know, yeah. Um, but I, I think we—I wanted to touch on this because we we tend to forget that um, Christians, all Christians, really, but like in particular, like famous Christians, Christians who are in the zeitgeist. I hate mm-hmm. that word, but I'm going to use it. Zeitgeist. Who are zeitgeist. In, who are in the pop cult, the popular culture of Christians sure. who have become um, popular for their, you know, their routines, their whether they're yeah. comedians or musicians. Sure. Actors, whatever. Yeah, um, we tend to hold them in these higher regards, like they're sort of like uh, immune to uh, the struggles of yeah. a sinner. Right, right, and we right. tend to forget that they are sinners. Right, they are. Just they like struggle you and with me. their own stuff. Oh, absolutely. Just like me and you. Um, <coughs> but uh, 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 getting back to John Christ, um, yeah, he uh, it was it came out last week that uh, he was having inappropriate relationships with women. Um, and uh, I don't have the exact wording, but I know that uh, um, I, I have a quote here from Fox News. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, he had just landed a Netflix special. Too. Yes. He was. Uh, I is don't know if that's still going to happen now, but I'm I'm pretty sure it Netflix still is. Netflix is pretty severe with that, really. Okay. No, no, I'm pretty sure that it, I'm pretty sure it still is going to happen. Because Netflix has been 
severe in the past with they distancing themselves from that kind of stuff. Really? Kevin Spacey being one. Oh, yes. Uh, Danny Masterson right. being another. But they're they, very, very – I wouldn't be surprised if that was yeah, pulled. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if – I don't think that they've officially okay. said it was going to be, but anyways. But, uh, yeah, that'd be a shame. But um, uh, he he admitted to, quote, destructful and sinful behavior. Mm -hmm. Didn't get into the specifics. I don't really think we need to know. No, no. Uh, but it was just – it was inappropriate behavior. Uh, he canceled his tour um, and postponed any other future dates in 2020. Right. Uh, after multiple accusations of unwanted sexting, harassment, and manipulation. Yep. 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 Um, tough stuff to hear uh, right. for a, a Christian uh, performer. Right. Um, you know, uh, he wrote a statement uh, to an organization called Charisma News. I don't want to give them too much of a shout out. I've never heard of them, but yeah. uh, I, I don't know. Have you, are you familiar with Charisma yeah, News? Yeah, they're you know, I are mean, they, they're are they legit or they're 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 all right. I mean, I okay. I think that they 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 do fine. But anyways, they don't yeah. do they have like an agenda or anything? Or I mean, they're they're definitely a little bit more on the. Uh, you know, again, pro <laughs> discernment. Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're more on the charismatic end okay. of things, but I mean, again, okay. you can see charisma. But I mean, I think that they do fine in terms of, um, in terms Just of their like reporting, yeah, okay. reporting and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the report kind of goes on. It says, "quote Over the past number of years, various women have accused." Oh, I'm sorry. This is Chris. Yeah. Uh, in a statement to Charisma News. Yeah. Uh, Over the past number of years, various women have accused me of behavior that has been hurtful to them. Um, while I am not guilty of everything I've been accused of, I do confess to being guilty of this. I have treated relationships with women far too casually, mm. in some cases even recklessly. My behavior has been destructive and sinful, Chris added. Uh, I've sinned against God, against women, and the people who I love the most. I have violated my own Christian beliefs, mm. convictions, and values, and have hurt many people in the process. Yeah. Wow. Tough stuff. Tough stuff. Um yeah. He, uh, he, uh, I guess he's been, uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to dive too much into his personal life, but I know yeah. that he had been dating uh, a woman named Lauren Elena. She is yeah, a, some uh, kind of singer. Or she's something? a country singer. Yeah. yeah. She was, uh, I think, um, was it America's Got Talent or uh, one of these, one yeah, of the one of the, yeah, one I, of those I ones. Yeah. One of the, um, um, fairly well known. I mean, like, you know, Chris yeah. is our age. He's 35. Yep. He, he's mid thirties, mm -hmm. just like us, uh. He uh, actually just recently broke up with this uh, Lauren Elena. Sure. Um, he had like ten years, eleven years on her. Wow. 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 Anyway, that's wow. not important. No. Yeah. But um, uh, he's got like two million followers on Facebook. He's got a million followers on Instagram. The lots guys, of people love him. You people. know what I mean? Yeah. He's got a lot of um, a lot of uh, not pull pulls the wrong word. He's got a lot of um. He, he, when he when he posts something, yep. it's seen by a lot of people. It's, it is. He's got a it lot is. of exposure. He's he's, he's 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 kind of he's the way out there. Well, he's he's kind of the way that I saw him. He was he was kind of like the next generation Tim Hawkins. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. Tim Tim Hawkins was. I mean, he's getting he's getting older. He's grandfather now, and he uh, is. you know he is. Yeah. You know, and grandpa and, Hawkins. Uh, yeah, you know, and he's still great. But I yeah. but I but I uh, but I kind of looked at. John Christ is kind of like the, um, you know, like the, the heir apparent. The, kind the, of the air, yeah, yeah, you know, it yeah. was good, you know. But anyways, um, yeah. he is uh, 35 years old. He's homeschooled son of a pastor. He's a pastor's yep. boy, yep. pastor's yep. son. Uh, and he, he, he specializes in satire. Yeah. So oh, course, that would yeah. be. So, you know, when people say like the faith community. Right. You know, uh, to hear something like this, uh, this of a popular Christian man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough to hear, and, and you know, he in his in his statement, and we'll get into the 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 backlash of this or right. the consequences of something right. like this, not only for him but for the faith community, and really what that does to the testimony uh, of his testimony and um, the testimony of Chris of really Christianity because when yeah. the world looks at a guy like this and to see him do something like this, they right. take it as a uh, a stain. Yeah, on the faith uh, as a whole. Yeah, see, this which is, is what unfair, Christianity is all about. You know, which what is I mean? unfair. And, yeah, but yeah. Uh, and we'll touch on that too, right? Um, because there's there's some there's things a lot I think there. Yeah, need to understand absolutely. There too. Um, but he he has said that he has privately quote privately sought and received professional treatment for my sexual sin and addiction struggles. Mm. So he's admitting to certain sexual addictions here, right? Um, adding that he is committed to, uh, a quote, committed to getting healing and freedom from my sin and has can he's canceled all future gigs until he's healthy spiritually, mentally, and physically, unquote. Good. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot There's a lot here. Yeah. Uh, th what's clear is that he has admitted to doing uh, right. 
something wrong. He is he's admitting here essentially that he is struggling with sexual sin. Yeah. Um and uh you know, he, he's gonna have to deal with the consequences of that. Right. Um but so I wanted to talk about this area of sexual sin just because and I don't I don't want to get obviously we're not gonna get graphic at all, but no, of course we're gonna not. speak in general terms yeah, because I course. think I think there's a bigger picture here that yeah. we can kind of unpack. Um there is uh kind of an elephant in the room. Yeah. Uh with this, I think. And I think a lot of men, um me included, really. Yeah. We have a tendency, I think, as Christian men, right? Right. To kind of balk at something like this, right? Yeah. Even if it may be something that we struggle with from time to time. Right. Um it's something we don't like to talk about because it is so personal mm-hmm. and intimate and mm-hmm. uh it's so um kind of embarrassing in a way to talk it's about it it's embarrassing yeah you know? yeah um and i think uh, uh I, I know I, i'm not going to speak for women i think this is going to be more t- geared towards men yeah today. definitely i mean I, uh, it's, not, it's not it is that something women, women struggle with too it, it's not that it's um, not that women don't struggle with sexual immorality because right. they do because they do I mean, sure but but i think that you know as men uh there is more of a proclivity towards right. that and i wouldn't want to speak I mean? for women either yeah, I think if we were going to speak about that, we would be. Uh, it would help us to have a, a woman's perspective. Yeah, on it, I mean, maybe maybe we'll do another we'll show do on like it. That, I mean, yeah, at some point, someone who's yeah. maybe comfortable in sharing sharing those kind of <laughs> things. Not, you know what I mean? Not but detailed, but like no, just but the, of course. The, the general yeah uh, concept, right? Uh, as it right. were. Um, so I, I I suspect we'll, we're kind of going to speak from the men's point of view, right? Yeah. Uh, today, um, so I, I, I guess my first question for you, Pastor Tim, as a yeah. pastor, yeah, um. Is in general terms, how often do you uh, come across this sort of struggle with men, uh, and um, why is it something that is so hard to deal with and so hard to kind of come to terms with? It's a loaded right. question, but it's, I, th- it's, I think we'll start there. Let's it start there. Lo- how often? Often, okay. Um, and uh, and when I say often. Um, Obviously, you know, I don't... You know, well, the thing is this. Is we'll kind of speak in generality. Well, in, in terms of counseling issues, like where, where I actually have someone who comes to me and admits that they have a problem with uh, sexual immorality, whether that's uh, pornography, whether that's, um, you know, uh, you know, adulterous affair, uh, you know, uh, all of these things that have I actually have had to deal with uh, over the years... Um, uh, and even y- as a young y- pastor, you've had to deal with this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's not like you're it's speaking from like three or four yeah, days no, of experience. No, no, you're I've speaking from I, I've I've been a relatively short amount of time. It, right? it has been. I mean, from my yeah. time. I mean, I've been a pastor for, for not 10 to downplay years. your. Well, no, no, no. But, no, but I mean, I've I officially I've been a pastor for ten years, and between right, my right. time as a youth pastor, especially okay. in dealing with sexual immorality there. Sure, uh, from, the, from the younger kids. From too, the yeah. younger kids yeah. all the way up to, which that's a whole nother yeah, issue that we should talk about. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, um, uh, you know, to, you know, young adults, you know, our age, uh, you know, to, to older people, um, I have seen the gamma uh, of, of sexual misconduct. And so, I mean, it happens and it happens frequently. Um and um, usually, th- I was uh, going back to my thought on it. Usually, yeah. the, the times of, of people admitting it, those times are are uh, are fewer than okay. when it actually is more of a um, a dramatic blow up. I've okay. had to deal more with blow ups. Like that was my John next Chris. question. Yeah. Is, was yeah. it, uh, have the majority of them been like? Uh, coming to terms with a specific attitude or a specific thing or was it more like as a result of being caught in something M- usually as a result being of being exposed by very accident. very much okay. so so that, yes. that, that's so it's been more of uh confronting the hidden yes. as opposed to that person willingly admitting I, I wish i wish it was the opposite i yeah. wish i wish folks would just you know admit uh and the fact honest, and just be honesty. honest with the fact yeah. of of you know what, like I'm struggling in this area. How can I, uh, you know, I, I need to seek help. How can I overcome uh, this this mm. this issue? Um, you know, that's what God's word says. God's word says to that we are to bear one another's burdens, confess our faults to one another. And uh, but again, as you said at the beginning, um, in this particular case, it's it's a uh, it's a very um, uh, it's a very difficult thing, I think, to admit. Um, uh, you know, especially as men, um, it's an embarrassing thing. Um, it's one that has uh, a lot of consequences. I think that's definitely part of it. 
A lot of broken um, trust when it comes, especially for guys who might be married, right? Or you know, with kids, right. and all these things, or, right. or have these, or have like a network of relationships right. that depend on their yeah. leading, yes, you their know, leadership, you and know. and it's it, it's one of these things, and so I I I think that um, you know, but I think that even in those particular cases, I think that this is where the church is so very important. Yeah, I think that uh, having a having a loving pastor and an understanding pastor, especially not that I am this, but I mean, like, you know, I just think that this is where it's so important to have a good relationship with your pastor and, uh, and to be able to have that, um, have that relationship where you can openly, uh, you know, share. And by the way, also, I mean, for the pastors who may be listening, um, you know, that you have that open relationship with, with others in your congregation, you know what I mean? Because it is a two-way street. The pastor is not immune to these kind of things either. Right. Matter, matter of fact, uh, you know, with the John Chris thing, um, uh, maybe a two weeks before that, I mean, I've shared it with you. Uh, there, uh, You know, I, I had a, a, a pastor that I knew uh, who had been married for, uh, you know, goodness sakes, 20-some-odd years. Uh, he's in ministry for over 20 years. And, um, you know, it come out dramatically that uh that he had been cheating on his wife and um and uh you know ended up ruining his ministry ruining his life and uh it was it's just so sad to see these things and where does that precipitate from it precipitates from an attitude of you know what i know i need help with this but i cannot admit it because i you know what i mean for whatever reason either due to my own pride or due to the fact that I don't want to deal with the consequences of what that may mean. Whereas if I just admitted it now and I just said, you know what, and sought help now, the consequences would be far less. You know what I'm saying? Especially even for like a pa- – like I, I think about pastors or like John Christ or whatever. Um, but the problem is is when you're involved in sin, it blinds you. You know what I mean? Like I- and, and you know, one sin is not just one sin. It, it's, it's a whole, pleth- you know, plethora. You know what I mean? I got it right this time. Plethora. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> nice yeah, job. Yeah, nice yeah. job. You know, it's uh, almost the same concept, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's almost the same concept as lying in a way because, right. you know, you one know, leads to another. One yeah. leads to another, and it kind of builds up until you're kind of in this, like, inescapable, well, what's perceived as an inescapable position right whereas the consequences are so more severe if you let it go 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 right. and then all of a sudden you're in this impossible situation where you're forced to betray like the closest people to you right as opposed to right at the beginning when you when you know the first time would have been like so right so much less of a of a you know it still would have hurt but it, yeah. it would have been less of a consequence right than letting it fester and, and do all the and build yeah. and build and build and that and that's any sin you know what i mean right um right. you know and uh um, yeah that's true and so and certainly i i don't want to um and this is another thing too is is you know while every single sin is a um is is you know terrible before god i mean like right. every sin will lead you to hell um you know, so I mean, in one sense, se- you know, sexual sin is no greater of a sin than you know, lying or, you know, uh, anything else. Uh, there are different consequences for sexual sin, and I think that those yeah, consequences sure. tend to be. It's the same thing as like, you know, yeah, murder technically is on the same lines as lying, but there are different consequences to murder. You know what I mean? Um, you know, then lying. You know what I mean? I'm going to go yeah, to jail. The, the, you know the what sin I mean? in yeah. God's eyes is the same, but the consequences are different. Yeah, the, the earthly yeah. consequences are very different. Right. Anyways, right. yeah. It's a, you know, it does a very wide spectrum there. Right. Of, of, of um, or even even in sexual sin, there's a wide spectrum of the different kind of consequences right. as far as right. trust. And, you know, obviously you think of, uh, you know, if there's you know, physical activity, then, I mean, there's always the consequence right. of, you know, you know ch- children or right. you know, these these sort of things are all are practically consequential. Right, right. You know, um, and but anyway, yeah. uh, I, I kind of wanted to start there just because, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it reminds you that uh, everyone is susceptible to this sort of sin. Right. That, that no one is immune right. to sin. And I, I know that uh, the Bible has a lot to say about sexual immorality. Right. Um, and I kind of wanted to start there. Yeah. Um, I, as a as a sort of direct link to this yeah. story and then kind of talk about what the Bible has to say about it and then kind of move into um, what we can do to uh, 
what we can do to not only protect ourselves from it, uh, to to sort of uh, be diligent in terms of def of uh, attacking yeah. that area, yeah, and then and also how just yeah. how to like talk to others when this sort of thing happens. Yeah, and um, yeah, because the world has a very different perception of Christianity uh, when this kind of thing happens. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you know. Uh, but anyway, let's start with yeah, what, yeah. What, what does the word have to say? Well, about well, it? well, first and foremost, I think one of the one of the one of the greatest passages that we can go to is First Thessalonians chapter four, uh, in regard to this uh, this issue of sexual immorality. It says this uh, in First Thessalonians chapter four, verse one. It says, "Finally, then, brothers, and it can mean brothers or sisters. You know, what I mean, the ESV only translates it as brothers, but I think that um, it's it can apply both ways. So people, people." Yeah. We, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and how to please God just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave to you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from pornaya, from sexual immorality, that each one of you knows how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passions of lust like the Gentiles or the unbelievers who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter because the Lord is an avenger. In all these things we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity but in holiness. And therefore, oh, whoever disregards this disregards not man uh, who, uh, but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Um, and, and I just, uh, you know, I, 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 one of the things that I, that I find interesting about this text is that, um, Paul is addressing this church, um, I as you can see, like, you know, from these first couple verses, uh, from the perspective that they know what is right and wrong in regard to this. Notice he says, Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and please God, just as you were doing, that you do so more and more and more. So stopping right there just for a moment, understanding before he addresses the issue of sexual immorality uh, for brothers and sisters, number one, it's admitting that, that it is a common sin. Uh, he's 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 admitting that it's something that that you know men and women um, Christians brothers and sisters all struggle with. Not only that is that that's an interesting point to start too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. I, no, 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 no. no. You yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but, but yeah, because we have to kind of get there first, don't we? Right. You, know, you have to you have to admit that it's, a, that it's an issue before it you is. can tackle the issue. Exactly, <laughs> because <laughs> kinda, that's kind of has to be your baseline, doesn't it? That's right. It, we can't just assume, you know, in in right. this issue that you know what nobody struggles with it. That I'm the only one, right? Because pride comes before the fall. Exactly. You know, <laughs> you know? I, but I honestly think that that's what it boils down to is that is that because it's 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 kind mm -hmm. of a a cliche. Uh, not not cliche, but it's kind of a um um. What's the word I'm looking for here? It's it's kind of a um uh. uh the, 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 the idea the idea for f that that uh, I am the only one that is struggling with um, that I'm the only one that struggles with this issue and that and that Christians in general do not struggle with this um, you know leads us to try and you know to try and hide our sin you know what oh I mean? yeah like you're so um, like you're on an island or something or, yeah yeah, yeah. Str and, struggling alone um, I'm sorry my my computer was was uh, giving me issues here um, but um, but yeah, you know. So I think that that admitting admitting that this that the sin is a common sin, um, that it's not just me that that deals with this, but that uh, others deal with this. Other brothers and sisters uh, do as well is is an important note to make. Yeah. But he but he also says just as you know how you ha how you ought to walk and to please God, you received it from us. Um, so they've they've had this message before. Yes. Yeah. And. If you spend any time in Christianity, at some point or another, you've probably sat under uh, a pastor or a youth pastor or um, some some time where they talk about um, sexual sin at some point sure. or another. So it's it's very clear in the text of Scripture. If you've read your Bible, you see over and over and yeah, over again God's word frequent. says it's frequent. Yeah. It's it's right at the beginning of Romans. You got you got uh, First Corinthians. You have all these other things. So you know this. But notice not only that he says. 
He says just uh, that you receive from us uh, how you ought to walk and to please God just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. So Growth. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. So the, the issue here is, before he even gets into the issue of sexual immorality, because that's the context, is that this is not just an overnight thing, okay? Um, that there are that there that even though you may struggle with sexual immorality, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are this um, you know that you should be demonized as a uh, you know this terrible Christian right. that you that you uh, but that instead because it's a common thing you may be pleasing God you know what I mean just as you were doing. Uh, but that you do so more and more and more, that you that you grow into and away from this particular kind of sin. When, when I think when I when I read these verses, I think about my days as a youth pastor. Okay, because I would go to this text often when I dealt with teens, because sexual immorality is a very very common thing, especially today. I think it always has been amongst teens, but I think especially in the internet age, it's 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 become more of a accessible thing. Right. You know, and it's funny. I'll, I'll tell you just a quick story about that. When I started to realize that I was getting old, is uh, back a few years ago uh, when I first started doing this. I still had a flip phone. Um, you know, I had a razor. You remember them razors? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, but all the kids were starting to get the iPhone. You know what I mean? It was in that kind of awkward. Uh, you know, the birth of the smartphone. The era. birth of the smartphone era. So yeah. they all had their smartphones, and so I went out to lunch uh, with this with this really godly kid, and. Um, you know, and so we're we're uh, we're sitting there, and uh, we're talking, and he says, and he says, Pastor, he says, he says, uh, he says, my my friends have been sending me, uh, you know, naked pictures of, of of women. You know what I mean? Not to be graphic. You know what I mean? Sure. And girls and stuff like that in the school. What do I do? You know what I mean? Like, because th- apparently this is something that they do or they did. I don't know if they still do. I'm sure that I'm it sure. happens. Yeah. Um. You know, and uh. It was in that moment, Adam, that I stopped and I th- and I and I kind of just thought to myself, boy, oh boy, we are dealing with a completely different generation of sexual immorality now, um, and um, I, and so and so as you said, with the technological era that that we've that we've entered, the internet and all of these different things, the accessibility. Has, we, we, we've uh, been brought right to the doorstep. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, Adam. All you gotta I, do is turn the knob and enter because right. that it's very it's easier now, easier to access this stuff. Right, because like when we were kids, okay, like look, uh, you know, I you know, in terms of just taking the the pornography thing, just for sure. a moment, yeah, right? Yeah. Pornography was not something that you and I had e- had easy access to when we no, were kids. No. It was it was not something that you could just like literally on your computer bring up or on your phone your phone in your pocket or or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you 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 had to like willingly search it out. Like yeah. if you wanted you to, to, you had to put in considerable effort just effort to get to, 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 to something, get to like, something that. like that. Yeah, not yeah. to be whatever, but uh, yeah. but nowadays it's like it's right there for these kids. And yeah. and in many ways, there's a whole another episode on that about how I think it robs these children of their of their innocence and all of these kind of things. But but uh, That's certainly part of it for sure. But yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, but but one of the things is is as I would address this as as a youth pastor, you know, occasionally I'd have a uh, you know, a teen come to me and and be like, you know, I, I you know I've been sexually active. You know, what I mean, I went too far with my boyfriend or girlfriend, or yeah. or uh, you know, uh, you know these kind of things. Um, you know, what do I do? And I would bring them to this text, and I would and I would tell them, look, you know, um, you know, you know what is right, just like the Thessalonians did. Um, you're striving to honor God with your life, overarchingly. Now do so more and more. Meaning. Like the woman caught in adultery, right? Jesus said, "Neither do I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. Stop what you're doing." The Pharisees were like, "What? Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. should stone her. We should stone her to death, right?" Yeah. And and that Com- is, you know, judgment. The right. Judgment, yeah. And and so Jesus shows mercy. Yeah. Right. And so, but because you know, as this text goes on to say, for you know what instructions we gave you through yeah. the Lord. This is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. And the term sexual immorality, just to, I, I quoted as por- pornaya before. It's actually where Greek. we get, right. in the Greek, that's yep. where we get, get the term pornography. Right. And that is kind of an all-encompassing word, um, any kind of sexual immorality, 
whether it's you know um, you know I would I would uh, define that as as adultery um, you know any kind of you know premarital relations yeah um, you know even, pornography even you know even I, mean? the, I would say thoughts even the thoughts because Jesus go would yeah. go 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 goes as far as to say that yeah. Yeah. And uh, whoever God, looks God's very one. clear yes. in, in his command for this. Uh, what, was the, what was the one you said here? Yeah. Uh, you okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, verse four. Yeah. Right at the end, it says, uh, control his own body in holiness. Holiness, right. Holiness is, uh, yeah. it's not a gray area term. Yeah. Holiness is very black and mm-hmm. white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, either you're a holy or you're not. <laughs> right. Now, none of us are. Uh, right. On our own. Right. Uh, we we our only holiness is in our Savior Jesus Christ. But right. Um, if you sin one time, yeah, you are no longer holy. That's right. Uh, that is the benchmark. It is. It is right? the benchmark. And God's holiness. And we've His all standard. and we've yeah. all failed. And we all have failed. And that's yes. why we need Jesus Christ. Right. But that's the standard. Right. Still, even though we're sinners, that is still the standard, and that that imp- that implies actually that directly commands. Right. Uh, work on right. our part. It's not just. I mean, you, 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 uh, verse one here. How you want to walk. Right. In, in that in that term is a it's a portrayal of someone working towards something. Yes. Right. Um. It's not just sitting back and and just letting things come to you. Or right. It, 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 we're talking. It, we talked about this last week. Jonathan Edwards. Right. He was all about this. Right. Absolutely. Working diligently in to, order to grow to improve right. to grow to become uh, uh, who God wants you to be. Right. Um, there's no no room for laziness mm-hmm. in this week. And yeah. so th- there's, there's a almost, you know, with, with um, I used like some of the, the, sorry, I'm like itching my nose. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, microphone. Uh, I kind of used like a basketball reference here for yeah. these sports fans because, you know, basketball split into two parts. There's right. offense and defense. Yeah. Right? If you're spending all your time playing defense. Right. You're never going to win the game. You right. got to go on offense. You got to go on offense at some point. You, you got to go mean? on offense. Absolutely. And that's why we have the word, our sword. Right. Absolutely. And uh, you know, prayer, all these Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Memorizing scripture. And um, it, it's a, it's a, it's, it's offense. We have to go on offense. Right. And I think part of part of going on offense, it's kind of like when it says, "This is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality." And then in verse seven, it says, "For God has not called us to impurity, but in holiness." Okay. Right. right. Um. So oftentimes we'll, we'll there again, get, verse seven, right? Yeah, you know. So you get this question from young people, especially, but sometimes I get it from old people. Is you know what is the will of God for my life? What what should I actively be pursuing? Right? Holiness. You know, I should be actively pursuing holiness. Yeah. S- you know, to be free from sexual immorality. This is God's will for your life. Yeah. You want to know what God's will is for your life? You know. To be like him. To be like him, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, but the but the question and comes. That's a battle to your last breath, my friend. Right. Yeah. And, and and that's a good point because here's the deal: is that sexual immorality, uh, oftentimes, it's it's not it's not exclusively a a young person's no. sin because I mean older people certainly fall into it, but um, there is there is biblical precedent that younger people especially do. Uh, tend to fall into this. For instance, uh, Paul told Timothy in in First Timothy uh, to to flee from youthful lusts is what he said. Youthful lusts, and uh, which which has the idea, the connotation of that there are particular sins for you know generational sins and um, and uh, not generational sins uh, in terms of pass passed down, but but like you know. Uh, when I'm a younger person, I'm going to struggle right. with one sin. Right. When I'm middle aged, age specific. I'm, yes. You know what I mean. Yeah. And I think you know, I think that it's not just younger people because obviously middle aged people our age, uh, after we have had, I mean, which is the case with with John Christ. But I mean, I think, I mean, how many men have I seen, um, you know, who are married and have children and are kind of. Uh, you know, uh, going through that middle of their life, and you know, they put what I mean? it all on the line, and they put it all on the line, and and uh, then they'll, they'll they'll cheat, and they ruin their they ruin their relationship, or they get or they get stuck, you know, in pornography and this yeah. in this kind of thing, and so it's um and with that kind of sin, it's not just the consequences aren't just for you, I right? Mean, you're, you're talking about branching right consequences that affect the people that are closest to you, right? And uh, destroying yeah. others, all you know, what I mean? of, you know, destroying trust and. Uh, you know the really relationships, right? You know, I mean, you could you could fracture an entire family, right, with something like this, right? Um, 
and that's not to say that sexual immorality is the only way to do that. No, you can but definitely do it, but it's, it's, uh, it's a it's definitely a one of the major ones, right. that's for sure. But but yeah, I mean, but but so the question is is okay, if it's a common sin, um if it's something that that um that you need to continually be sanctified and grown out of. Yeah. You know, I guess the next question is and I don't know where you were going with no, this, go for but it. Yeah. but but I mean, I was just thinking, you know, well, how do you practically do that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um sure. like what what is it that we need to do? Like if 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 um you know you're struggling with with pornography if you're if you're in a uh adulterous relationship uh if you are you know if you're caught in that sin um and you know nobody knows about it or or if you know you just you know whatever you just you just feel trapped in that sin like how do i get out right like that that's a legit question and um and i think i think the bible answers that and, um, you know, I mean, f- first and foremost, I, I, you know, it's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, I think is, um, is probably the, the uh, one of the kickers here. Um, it says this, it says, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but, sexual immora- but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. But I think th- at the beginning of that 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 verse, uh, flee from sexual immorality. The word there literally means to run from it, as hard as you can. Like if I'm fleeing from something, I re- I remember uh, uh, the other day I was I was walking up the road up here because I've been trying to go for more walks, and um, and uh, I walked by this dude's house, and there was a big dog in his yard, and I saw him, and he was looking at me, and. Now I I didn't run from him, but I f- I fled. I turned tail and I walked back. He had that and, look. Uh, he had that look in his eye. But I I did not want to get closer to this big dog. Right. I mean, like literally, you know, uh, f- you know, fleeing, you know, from this from this. I mean, it's like you know, uh, you know, full fledged running away from something. So um, it's but, interesting this imagery of walking, yeah, running these right. things. You know. Uh, I I like how fleeing, fleeing, you know, all right. these all these active motions, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's interesting, the use of fleeing from this and walking toward God. Right. It's interesting because I I wonder if there's any. And I might be playing too much into it, but I wonder if there's any significance between because you know obviously when you flee from something you're doing it quickly. Yes. But walking, yeah, toward God, it's a more of a slower, deliberate, yes, uh, action. And right. I wonder if that's that's that way for a, a purpose. I yeah, and, and I and I, I think wonder. that's a great point because again, I mean the issue the issue here is um, you don't want it to turn into this gigantic, uh, dramatic blow up uh, where you ruin your life. Okay, um, you know, again, going back to to you so know, quickly get away. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so you you can quickly get away from it, but how do you do that specifically? Well, you know, I think number one by recognizing what it is that it is sin. Uh, I think that that's that that's the case, uh, but I think also, uh, you know, as we said at the beginning, um, you know, allowing a a trusted brother or your pastor. Or somebody to um, to uh, listen. Yeah, let them in and let them in. Um, you know, we are not to live the Christian life alone. We are not to. Uh, I say it often from the pulpit. We're not to be lone wolf Christians. Um, we are to live this Christian walk together until the day that we step foot into eternity. Um, and so. Uh, as brothers in Christ specifically, and sisters, if if you're struggling, I mean, um, we are meant to be there for one another in these in these cases. And so, um, being willing to go to a brother and say, "Look, um, I'm really struggling with A, B, C, and D. What do I do?" Um, and uh, I think that that number one that that shows a tremendous amount of humility that it takes. Whenever we sin, to 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 actually admit that what I have done is wrong, 
Um, but number two, it also, uh, the humility is not just in the admittance of the sin, but also in the seeking help for that sin. And uh, The recognition that you can't do it alone. Right. Yeah. And um, when we were in Bible college, um, we, would, uh, we would have uh, accountability partners is what we would have. Uh, and they really encourage you to do that um, with, with, you know, a brother in Christ so that, you know, if, if you fell into sin, uh, if you had the desire for those kind of sins even, that it could be uh, deterred right from the, right the get-go. And also so that you could go somewhere safe where you can actually admit these things. Now, granted, you know, as I said before, like, what do you do if, like, you're caught in, like, okay, like, you know, I, t- I take, uh, for instance, again, I keep going back to, like, you know, older guys like, like John Christ and, and others, uh, you know, you know, uh, the pastor that I was talking about, like, what do you, what do you do there when, you know, the consequences for your actions are going to be so severe if I admit this? Uh, what do you do in that particular case? Well, I think that this is where John Christ is kind of a good example in, in, in this regard. Um, you admit what you did, and you repent, and you take the lickings uh, that, that come along with that and just expect it. John Christ can't get up in front of a group for, for a while, at least for the foreseeable future. Now, granted, that's kind of a minor thing in, in, the, in the sense of, you know, okay, yeah, big deal. He can't do his comedy act anymore. But th- this was his life. It was his livelihood, yeah. This is his livelihood. This is, this is what he was known for. Uh, yeah, his life is going to change dramatically, dramatically as, a as, as a result of this. Can he recover from this? Yes, I, yeah, believe, he, I sure. believe he can, yeah. just like anybody can. But, yeah. like, and, and I even think By the for— the grace of God. And, and I even think for, like, my, 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 my pastor friend, you know, who, who fell into this— um, you know, can he be a pastor anymore? No, that's one of the consequences of it. You've, yeah. you've now, you've, you are now no longer, whenever, whenever, you know, the congregation looks at you, you know what I mean? You are no longer in their eyes an example of, 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 uh, of this. Uh, not that pastors don't struggle in this particular area, you know what I mean? But, uh, again, right. it's a little bit different there's area. There's a higher calling there. But there's a higher calling that's a whole different issue. But I think, does that mean that he should be ostracized from the Christian community simply because he he struggles and and had a and had this these problems? No, mm-hmm. and and so th- what uh, my point is is that is that you know we you know if you find yourself in that particular position, you need to number one come to terms with the consequences that are going to happen. Um, you know, I- you know, like I said, whether you're in ministry, okay, well, you're not going to be able to be in ministry anymore. So you need to, you need to just get that in your mind. You need to, if you're married, uh, you need to come to terms with the fact that, you know what? Yeah, I have betrayed the trust of my wife and I've betrayed the trust of my children. And, um, you know what? I'm going to have to deal with that probably for a very long time. Um, and you know what? Uh, it's going to take a long time, uh, to recover from this. Um, but the humility uh, that it takes to be able to do this is necessary in order to come out of it and come out of it stronger than you were before. Um, you know, the problem is, is well, oftentimes what I've seen is that when people get caught into these into these sexual sins, especially especially in like I'm I know I'm moving from like pornography to like adultery. I think the two it's all it, go, yeah and 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 like like uh, kind of we're, we're in the same more, arena right yeah. Um, you know, I think the demographic that listens to us, you know, is more along the lines of married folks, sure. um, you know, who are our age, uh, those who are preparing for marriage, these kind of things. Um, and so that's why I'm kind of addressing that issue, uh, more than anything. I, th- I think I remember one time I was dealing with a, with a, um, with a couple who, um, uh, what, what, it, what ended up happening was, um, uh, the 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 wife had been uh, working and um, uh, and had uh, developed a relationship with a guy at work, and the husband came home one day and found an email open and and that kind of you know uh, you know let the cat out of the bag, and so um, I never forget this this young guy you know in his late twenties early thirties. Uh, come to me. I was working around my, you know, uh, I wasn't. It wasn't here. It was at another church, 
and uh, coming to me later in the evening and just in tears and just like just broken hearted that his wife would do this. And uh, and so I said, hop in the truck. We're going to go and we're going to go talk to her. And so so we drove on over and uh, we confronted her. And immediately there was a, a uh, indignation that on her part that that uh, I mean, she admitted that that it was um, that it was sin. Uh, but there was an indignation on her part that uh, that uh, that I uh, would not consider any other side to this or anything along those lines. So she was justified, uh, justifying yeah. her actions, and and that's my point is that is that uh, eventually though in that particular case, uh, you know there there was reconciliation it took years, and uh, they are doing just fine right now serving the Lord and and uh, their marriage is stronger as a result. Uh, because God had worked in her heart, and um, she repented, and she's doing just fine, and their family, um, you know. And so I know I'm going off. You well, know, that's, but yeah. you know what, the, the last part of that story, it, it, it kind of reminds you that that's really what it has to come down to, right? Right. You know, God has to work in your heart. Um, and you mentioned um, having the uh, ability to humble yourself and right. to admit or to confront this issue. That comes from God, too. Right. Um and you mentioned the the humility it takes, but it also takes. I th- I think. I mean, even though it feels like it may lack maturity to to um, I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's probably I don't know if that's true, but I mean, it it takes maturity right to confront that right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though it may be a struggle to get to that point right, it, whether it's in maturity or not. Um, getting to that point and then going over that ledge. Yeah. Uh it takes a a great right. trust in God to to uh to work uh and it takes maturity to do that. Well, it's funny you I I mean think you, well, yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100% and I I think um awkwardly worded but I got to the point. No, 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 no <laughs> but but I think I think that there's two points that you're making is that first and foremost <laughs> that this true repentance of and being able to go over that ledge needs to come from God. Yeah. Uh, when we were talking about it before, um, before we before we started recording, you you had mentioned Galatians, um, yeah, chapter five, yeah. and with the fruit of the spirit, right? Yep. And um, you know, um, you know, versus verse, the works of the flesh. Yeah. yeah, versus the works of the flesh. Like for instance, verse nineteen uh, states, uh, "Now the works of the flesh are evident," and then the first one is pornia, it's sexual. That's immorality. interesting. That's the first one, right? You yeah. know what I mean. And then others that go along with that, yep. impurity, sensuality, which are all different things. But there, but so in case you didn't get pornia, you know what I mean. In case you didn't get sexual immorality, it's all, it's all, um, it's all right. one. These one are all these are all pleasure based. Yeah. Uh, things. And and yet in verse twenty two, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Uh, against these, th- there there is no such law. But the point is, is that all of these things that 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 are that uh, that we that I just you know said right here, love, joy. All these fruits are from who? They are from the Spirit of God. And therefore, God needs to be the one that convicts us and works in our hearts. But on the other end of the spectrum, there needs to be a willingness on our part to rid ourselves from this sin, a desire for holiness, uh, a desire to honor God uh, if these fruits are to blossom from, from ourselves. And um, which means that uh, you know, again, uh, you know, we need to willingly walk in uh, this sanctification. Um, there needs, and and if I don't have a desire to to walk in in holiness, you know, there's two options here. Number one, you need to pray to God that He would give you conviction, um, even bring something into your life to crash everything down, if that's what it takes. Uh, or you need to really think about if you have absolutely no conviction, and I'm not just talking about sexual immorality, but I'm talking about just in sin. As I'm in just general. talking about sin in general. Yeah. If you have no conviction of sin whatsoever, uh, yeah, you know, we, we might be talking about an unsaved person. We might be talking about somebody who is a Christian in name only, yeah. and um, yeah, and uh, and which you never want to go there, but but it is true. Um, praying a prayer, I know, biblical, I, yeah. I, I, praying a prayer one time in your life does not save you. Okay. Uh, just because you say that you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're going to heaven necessarily. Um, Judas was a Christian, okay? And um, and so my, my thing is this, and I don't say that to scare people, but but my point is, is it that— It should, in a way. It should scare us. Yeah. 
because the the, the Bible there's a healthy says, fear there, as right? Far, I mean, but at the same time, we don't want to. Uh, we want to be confident in our salvation, right? That that comes from God too. Exactly, and yeah. and and how can you be confident in your salvation? Like especially if you're if you're strugg- if you're struggling with sexual immorality, because oftentimes what happens in these cases is 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 that, um, and I know we're kind of going in fifty directions, yeah. but we're, we're going to close with this. We're gonna we're gonna end it. Yeah, uh, but I know here. I know oftentimes I know oftentimes with especially with sexual sin, what I've found with with guys especially is that they. You know they'll try and try and try and then they'll fail. Okay. Yeah. Um. You know, and that, and then you know, I had one gentleman who came to me one time who was struggling with pornography, and um, and he said, you know, Tim, I would go months and months and months without looking at it, and then and then all of a sudden, um, you know, it would just be, you know, uh, you know, there the desire would come back and then I would fall into it again, and he said, well, am I really saved because I'm not because I'm not growing in my, uh, you know, my sanctification here. And I said, well, um, you know, I would say, yes, you are, because you still have conviction of that sin, Mm. um, because you still have uh, the Holy Spirit who is convicting you and growing you and, and again, striving to produce these fruits of the Spirit within you. Um, And so please don't take what I'm saying today is that if you're struggling with sexual immorality that you're not saved, that's not the issue. The point is, is that, yes, you should fear, uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, you need to trust God that he's going to do the work in your heart and also at the same time strive for that. So the things that I would say is I would say uh, to, to beat sexual immorality is, yes, flee from it, but flee from it to, the, to God, like you said, to, to the right people. Find somebody who you can confess that sin to. Uh, admit that the sin is sin. Uh, accept the consequences for that sin, no matter what it may be. Um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, trust your, trust your pastor's guidance and direction in regard to these things. I would highly recommend, uh, you, you, you go to your pastor and, and, uh, and talk to him especially because he can open up the word and, and do these things. But, but on the other end of the spectrum, uh, ad- admit it and accept those consequences and then trust God that he will bring you, uh, to uh, overcome this sin because he will and he can and I've seen him do it um, God God uh, God is uh, you know always in the business of sanctifying us it is his will and so if we strive for that will uh, he will always be faithful to to uh, to give us the holiness that he requires of us he doesn't require anything from us that he's not willing to give us so, uh, so I praise God for that. I know I'm, I, I, I know I was kind of, but well, you know what they call that? That's the bow, you know, the bow. Yes. <laughs> the bow. That was well done. Yeah, absolutely. We, 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 we should talk about this again at some point. Yeah. Um, I, there's I, a lot of facets to this. There is, uh, you know, uh, we talk about specifically the teenagers. Um, that's, that's a whole pod that's a right whole, there. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's uh, the whole mental aspect of it, right? Um, as opposed to the physical actions themselves. Right. I mean, there's a lot to get into. Um, obviously, this was more of an overview, right? And, and and we didn't even talk about the consequences of us facing it culturally, right? Which we can yeah. get into as well. Yeah, um, maybe more on that later. But um, yeah. for now, though, we say goodbye. Yes, uh, guys. Uh, this was episode 39. Amen. Spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ one podcast at a time. Gospelicious Amen. Radio. That's right. Uh, Tim's Theology Thursday. Uh, Check Lord, it out, guys. Yeah. yeah, Lord willing, another one coming tomorrow, Lord cool. willing. So. Uh, Tim's Theology Thursday. Pastor Tim takes a uh, viewer or listener question and uh, theology question and uh, attempts to answer in five minutes or less. Right. Uh, pretty cool concept. Uh, you've been doing a really, really good job with that. So nice job. Minor yeah. details coming soon. Coming soon. We're going to have a teaser on that in just a little bit. Giddy up, buddy. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep wa- and listening. <laughs> Actually, th- that's going to be a YouTube-specific uh, episode uh, series. So yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of our, our regular pod is on you yeah, know uh, podcasts. Yeah. So that stuff, w- yeah. you're gonna have to watch that one on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, but that's coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. Amen. Uh, merch. We got stickers, t-shirts, t-shirts. Uh, coasters, coasters, other yeah, things by uh, request. Yes. Uh, actually, I got a great request from uh, 
I think a buddy of yours. Yeah, for, for, yeah, for Justin. Mugs? Yeah, mugs. <laughs> That'd be actually a great idea. I know we should do. I, I gotta look into that. That's a I great look idea. Into that. Yeah. So we're gonna look know. into mugs too. A little mug. You Thank know, you. That'd be Thanks, awesome. buddy. Appreciate yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so guys, find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Find our videos ready Amen. on YouTube. Uh, audio versions of this podcast are on iTunes, Podomatic, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Tune in. <gasps> Where all your podcasts are offered. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Subscribe to us, like us, share us, all that good stuff. Spread the gospel delicious word. Be bo. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Be bo. Amen. Amen. Uh, until next time, for Pastor Tim Howard. Amen. Happy painting. God bless, my friends. Thank you. This is Adam Miner. Have a good one. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Bye now. Thank you.